Let's take a quick look at this report that uses a dimensional source and uses dimensional functions to enhance the report. Now in this case it's a basic cross tab that has country on the rows. And this country is actually a set definition. We'll see is defined down here. And in this set expression, we're simply bringing back Canada and the United States for the two countries in this report. On the columns, we're displaying the product line level, which is taken from the products dimension. And then we're displaying measures. And this is a calculation that is a set of two other underlying calculations in this query, dynamic revenue and dynamic unit cost. So let's go into the query and take a look at those two calculations. So dynamic revenue uses a member function, and we'll get into that in more detail later. But its expression looks at the caption of country, and if it's equal to Canada, then we're going to return revenue times an exchange rate that is supplied by the person running the report. Otherwise, we'll return revenue. The reason for this is that the data is already in US dollars, so we want to convert the Canadian dollars into US dollars for the output of the report. The dynamic unit cost calculation is very similar. In this case, if it's Canada, we want to return the unit sale price, and if it's United States, return simply the unit price. Let's run the report and take a look at the output. We're first presented with a prompt page, and we'll supply an exchange rate, then click Finish, and we'll see that the output for Canada has the revenue converted using the conversion rate. And the values under the United States are simply the values that are taken from the data source, since they're already in US dollars. For dynamic unit cost, for Canada, we return the unit sale price. And for the United States, we return unit price. Now, the if condition used in the dynamic unit cost calculation returns a member from the measure dimension regardless. But the revenue calculation returns either a member or a new value through the multiplication of the exchange rate. And this is important to understand for later in the report. Okay, so let's close this window and we'll build up this report. I've created a starting point report that already contains most of the items that we need for the report itself. And that includes the country items on the rows and the product line on the columns. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go into the query, and we're going to add a new data item to this query. And this data item will contain an if condition. So what we're going to do is to say if the caption of country is equal to Canada, then we're going to want to return the revenue value taken from our sales namespace and the sales fact measure dimension and multiply that revenue times an exchange rate that is provided by the end user. Else, we'll simply return revenue. And we'll click OK and we'll name this data item dynamic revenue. And you'll notice that revenue is automatically added to the query since it's referenced in the dynamic revenue calculation. So let's add another data item. And this one will have a similar if condition. We'll say if the caption of country is equal to Canada, then we want to return unit sale price. Otherwise, let's return the unit price. 
and then we'll click OK. And we'll rename this data item to dynamic unit price. And again, you'll notice that unit sale price and unit price are added to the query. Now, the next thing we want to do is add a calculation underneath product line. And this one we'll call measures. And we'll set this as other expression and simply make it a set expression. Again, a dimensional function that will return dynamic revenue and dynamic unit price. Now this set expression expects to return members and that's key. So let's click OK and run the report and see what happens. So now we see this error, invalid coercion from value to member. So the dynamic revenue calculation that we're passing into this member set is actually a value and not a member. So the way we're going to get around that is by using the member function to ensure that that item is actually a member when it's passed to this member set. So we'll go in and edit this calculation. And at the beginning, we'll simply add in the member function and open parentheses. And if we click on the member function below, we can see the syntax expected. In this case, a value expression followed by string one, string two, and a hierarchy. Now, string one is the actual member name. And then string two will be the actual member caption. In this case, we're just going to make them the same string, dynamic revenue. And then finally, we're going to add the sales fact measure dimension to fulfill the last parameter of this member function. So now when we run the report, we no longer see this error. We can supply a conversion rate. And we see that dynamic revenue is returned. Of course, the values under dynamic revenue could be formatted to currency. In this case, they're not. And the first row has the currency conversion applied, whereas the second row does not for the United States. Now let's take note of the column header for the dynamic unit price column. In this case, it actually returns the word measures. The reason for this is that dynamic unit price does return members, but the actual dynamic unit price calculation itself is not a member. To get around that, we can edit its calculation and add the member function as we did previously. So we'll provide the member name, in this case, dynamic unit price, and we'll make its caption the same string, again, dynamic unit price, and then add the sales fact measure dimension as a last parameter. So now when we run the report and supplier exchange rate, we'll see that the second measure column actually does return dynamic unit price as the header. And that's what we expect to see. Now, an alternative to this technique is to actually use a measure calculation, which is the equivalent of using the member function as we did for this particular calculation. So let's delete the item and add a query calculation to our query. We'll set it as a calculated measure and we'll call it dynamic unit price again. And we will point it to the appropriate measure dimension, in this case, sales fact. And then I'll just copy from my notepad the same expression that we used before, the if expression and add it back into the expression definition for this new calculation and click OK. Now dynamic unit price is already referenced in the measures calculation. So we can simply run the report now.
and then we'll see the output is exactly the same as when we use the member function. So as you can see, there's two methods that you can use to reference calculations in another dimensional function, in this case, a set expression. Hope you found this useful and hope to see you watching more proven practice videos.